that. This is cool. This arrived. That's very cool. But we got a whole stack of stuff. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to start installing some of it. <laughs> but this is pretty fancy, this one. This is what we've been waiting for. Let's get it on. So where do we start? I don't know. Trolling motor, VHF. I don't know. Where do we start? Where do we start? Maybe we'll start with a nice easy one. Sound to cover, maybe. <laughs> well, we'll just slowly work our way through. It should actually be um, pretty secure if I sort of burn the holes and I've got to put the little knobs on the outside so they screw on each side because everything seems to rattle off on the highway but protected from salt spray and I've noticed on the long drives when I did that big Sydney road trip I noticed that I just tend to have to take it off because it's just too much sort of whipping back and hitting the front of the or the back of the uh, head unit but this might allow me to at least do a little bit of driving and not worry about everything sort of just whacking and so much pressure on it but we still might take it off on the really long drives, but the short trips to the ramp and stuff, we can just leave it like that. It gives it some protection. In was the better one, I think. <laughs> Beauty. Yeah, that'll protect it nicely. Heading sensor. Oh, okay, so that would go at the back of the boat, would it? To the other end of the boat, so I can tell which way you're facing. That's cool. Guess I probably should read the instructions, shouldn't I? <laughs> what does that say? It's got important information on it. Probably should read that as well. <laughs> All right, let's get this on. Just in case strap. Sweaty hands of it. Looking good. Now we just gotta attach the puck to this and we're good to go. Oh, and wire it in. Oh, and attach the uh, 
the other puck. <laughs> see it eh? We'll have to have a look in the morning. But I guess we might as well keep doing some wiring and bits and pieces. or do we go back to the battery there maybe we do VHF first still got more to do and to make sure I plug this uh, antenna in because it's surprisingly long and it wouldn't fit in the spot I was going to put it the way I was going to do it so now we're going to come up with a new idea this way it might actually work better because we'll keep it up away if water does come down here when I'm hosing it off higher That'll be good. And then we want to bend it down here. late last night for obvious reasons. Oh, I cleaned my blade up a bit too. Nice.
sweet. Let me just take care of this wiring. Get a holder here. Place the holder up here. Cool. the next clip, there it is. Got a little protective faceplate. That looks pretty slick now actually. <laughs> it's all on like nice little angles. We switched on. Everything's working. On and on. Here's my backbone, but yeah, all these cables, they make them so much longer for bigger boats and stuff, but yeah, that's all right. I'll bundle it all up again and push it all the way to the back. <laughs> And it just stays out of the way and dry. Okay, that's the recess that it goes in. So I guess, I guess we actually just try and fit it in there. Eh? <laughs> Game of angles, obviously. There we go. <laughs> Had me worried for a split second. But, yeah, nice. I guess we can just take this rope off as well. Solar charging, trolling motor. Perfecto. The last box. <laughs> the real last box this time. But we're gonna have to pull the boat out a little bit to uh, uh, do this one, because we're gonna get to the motor. Pretty slick. Here we go again, eh? But this time, I definitely think we're going to get uh, some real serious improvements. That's a pretty good match, actually, isn't it? Nice. Yamaha Grey. <laughs> That's one way to do it. <laughs> Beauty. Let's get drilling. Took me a while to get the courage to uh, drill in my brand new engine, but after seeing, um, after seeing uh, the kind of lift of the nose and seeing how it behaves, I think I'm definitely looking forward to putting this trim plate on. And um, I've heard good things from other people that have put it on as well, so we'll give it a crack. Yeah, you can see my homemade uh, chock now on the drive down to Sydney. I don't know whether one of the kids uh, knocked it, knocked the engine up a bit, but because it didn't sort of clip on tight and snug, it fell off on the highway. So if anyone finds it, it's mine. <laughs> but so I made another one. This is made of the same kind of material, but uh, I think this needs to be just a little bit firmer to do the same job because what happens is the engine goes slow enough now that when I go out my driveway, it's sitting just a bit lower so I can either make another one but you know this cost me 12 bucks or something but it's not as firm but uh yeah it's doing the job actually it does take the pressure off it does an alright job but could be a little higher but the new ones are like 70 bucks or something and they were all closed over Christmas so I couldn't get one even if I wanted to <laughs> Right. 
right and even is the key. I think they, some people don't like the look. I think these hydrofoils make the boat look pretty cool. <laughs> I guess it does stick out a fair bit. <laughs> Such a good feeling. Drilling into your brand new motor. Oh dear. <laughs> She'll be right. Mark there a bit, didn't it? Let's push some under. the goods I reckon we're pretty much ready to hit the water see you in the morning This is where you need spot lock rod. Right? Hey, hey, hey. And, uh, just switch everything on. I'll tell you, that was uh, a little bit more stressful than I wanted it to be. I've just realized the problem with this boat ramp. I've only launched here like one or two times before, but it's always been low enough where there's a little sand patch on the corner there. But here, today, there is no sand patch because it's high tide. So you've got to either sort of put an anchor out or just hope that the swell doesn't take it too far. So it's tricky. And that was uh, a, bit, uh, a bit annoying. So what we, <laughs> what we might do is we'll get uh, the life jacket on and we'll just head straight out. And then once we're out, then we can uh, muck around with all these gadgets and talk about it while we try and catch a fish. See, the old mate down there, he has the right idea. See, he's got his trolling motor out controlling it. That's what I should have done, except I didn't, uh, I've never turned it on before. <laughs> so I've got to pair it and calibrate it. So uh, yeah, it would have been a bit hairy to do that. But look, we did it. We didn't hit the rocks. So I guess we're ready to go out. Water's warmed up, sand has fired up. All right, I guess we go and check out the bar. As long as we don't crash it in the bar, we'll be having a good day, I reckon. Interested to see what this, uh, how this uh, behaves as well when it comes to lift and keeping the nose down. We cross over to this side. So it's sort of pretty much high tide now, so we shouldn't have any problems compared to like last time I was here. So we still gotta be careful.
movie here and there. But we made it. Oh, my hat. I almost got away then. I didn't lose the lucky hat. But um, yeah. Now, bar crossing, no problems today. Uh, I don't know if anyone watched that live stream, but on the live stream I did it uh, in much shallower. It was almost dead low tide, so it was a bit more hairy in one regards, but it was flatter as well. So a little bit of lump, but it's pretty good. No uh, big waves sort of tearing over me, which is a <laughs> definitely not what I'm really, uh, into at the moment in the new boat but i guess today is all about just trying out some of the new gadgets here that's a bit of swell there Look at that roll under you <laughs> a bit exciting but yeah i've got to get this trolling rotor deployed and um up and running so that'll be uh pretty exciting i might do that just a bit over here though so uh we'll try and get some bait first and then um yeah let's get this going so slight addition we've added a plug down the bottom of the live well a lot of people have been asking about the live well so this trip is definitely going to have a bit of a install rundown on it <laughs> we'll just get this hose out for now and get my water bottle out Not that i've been drinking it and we just switch this switch on oh and we turn the tap on the reason i've got the tap on is simply because when you're moving at speed the the tank automatically fills up just by the pressure of the water pushing against the pipe. But we'll pop a little bit of water in now and then we'll probably just let it, you know what, it's noisy so we'll turn that off and we'll just let it fill up naturally just by moving around in a second. We will go and find some bait. In fact, it looks like there's bait on the sander already but it's patchy and high so we might not be able to get our hands on it. But yeah, let's give it a go. Oh! Look, the bait jig just can't wait to get off. <laughs> I've got one hand though. I'm looking forward to deploying that trolling motor, that's for sure. Maybe we should do that. We'll have a couple of drops of bait and then maybe we should use that because that would be very handy for finding bait in holding position, wouldn't it? But we've got lots to learn with the trolling motor. I've never had one, never used one pretty much, but one person sort of give me a go of theirs. Yeah, it's going to be a big learning curve, but I know what they can do. I've been on people's boats that have them and they're pretty darn fantastic. So definitely keen to have my own and get it going on. All right, so we're reaching the structure. It's definitely better on that. Let's get it out of gear. <laughs> we don't want to keep moving up on the bommy. Yeah, there's definitely lots of bait on that sounder. Hopefully it's not all pomfreds. Nice yellow tail, then we can talk about other stuff. There we go, oh, here we go. Please don't be pomfred, please don't be pomfreds. Come on, yakas. No, <laughs> pomfreds. Okay, these are the Eastern pomfreds. We have used these in the past for uh, Spanish, so might just keep one. We'll keep this bigger guy, just in case. We do manage to sort of uh, struggle with the baits. So you're staying in here. But, are we still on it or we're off it? We're a bit off it, but we'll see what we can get. How good is a rag on the boat? <laughs> Makes all the difference in the world, doesn't it? All right, uh, small pomfrets. Come on, we've got to do better than that. There's got to be a yucker in there amongst them as well, somewhere. Okay. Purple sheen on him. He's actually really cool, slightly different type. Whew. But, definitely still not the baits we're looking for. So let's move on a little bit more, I guess. Something took it with a bit of a pace then. What is this? <laughs> I'm gonna lose you. I have to slowly work you up. Definitely feel like you got a bit more weight on you. Oh, whatever it is, zipping around. 
What is it? What is it? What is it? Ah, it's, a, it's a little snapper or a broom or something. Oh, look at him go. Oh, and he's been jagged on his head. No wonder he's got so much pace. You're almost legal, buddy. Tarwin. <laughs> Tarwine. Oh, come on, buddy. Come on, come on, come on. Stop, stop, stop. stop. Dude, you're spiking me. Ah, if you stop doing that, I'll be able to get you off. Well, definitely not the fish we're looking for, but pretty cool. Come on. We're definitely on a patch of bait now. Okay, we've got another of something. Please be another yakka, not a prom fruit. All right, here we go. Now we're, now we're catching bait. All right, and it's jumping off for me. Beautiful, thank you. That works for me. Oh, in he goes. See, this is where we want the spot lock. You know what I'm gonna have to do. Now that I've got two baits, I should just uh, get that uh, trolling motor going. Please be some more. We can rest easy. Yeah, oh, we got one. Okay, that's all right. If we can get two each pass, we'll be happy. You turn this on first or the motor first? No idea what I'm doing. So, uh, we'll undo this and we'll get this in the water, eh? Now that is, oh yeah, it's about the right height. That's perfect because the height just happens to coincide with the distance here that holds the buckles and holds it nice and tight on drives and transit. Okay, that's all. <laughs> is it as simple as that? Should pair automatically. I did manage to pair it yesterday. Is that flashing? Yeah, that's flashing, okay, so that means it's paired. I just mounted it here on the box for now. I couldn't bring myself to drill into the boat anywhere and I didn't really know where to sort of put it. Press the tick button, okay. I am responsible, yes, that's fine. All right, so are we on? Let's adjust our speed up, I guess. Let's just check it out. Okay, no, the motor is spinning and it's pulling me, pushing me back around that way. So let's spin it around this way. <laughs> and uh, increase the speed and see if it turns me around. I am turning, look at that, amazing. I'm definitely getting pulled back that way, but not by very fast, so we need to increase our speed. All right though, but I think we're pretty much in the zone where we wanted to be. We're coming up onto that bait again. So we'll get a little bit further up and then maybe I'll slow down a bit. So I'll slow down <laughs> to maybe seven. We're right on that bait now. So any second now I'm gonna hit spot lock. So I could slow down a bit more to five maybe. And then what happens if I hit anchor? All right, let's see. Look, it's turning me around. It's doing something, it's spinning. Something's happening. <laughs> All right. I think she's pulling me back. It's working hard in this current and wind. But we appear to be uh, holding position. Let's see, we're just to the side of that mark. I wouldn't mind putting that mark in. And then do I just, I just leave this on, right? So I can just pop that in here. And we are on the marks. How good is that? <laughs> so I haven't even calibrated it yet, but it seems to be fine out of the box. This seems to be paired, no problems. So it's helping us with our direction, the puck there. So I was thinking maybe here, or even I see people mounting them sort of just here or here. But to be honest, if it works here, like I just mounted it top of this box, this box is always gonna be facing forwards and in this position, seems to be fine. <laughs> Look at that. Well, it's gonna give it a good workout this morning, but let's get that one of those liveys out and we'll try and catch some others as well. But we are holding position just here. That's great. Oh, I got this new rod set up. Not a new reel. I'm using the old reel. Uh, well, not old. It's still brand new, basically. But um, authority, but paired with a new slammer rod. So this is going to be fun. If I can manage to catch something on here, I'll be a very, very happy man. Just 
just going single treble on the single strand. Alright, in you go, mate. Good luck. We'll let you out while we hold position. And then we might even try and catch a few more baits. It's definitely a nice spot here where big fish should some come swimming past. A little less, a little less heat on there. Sounds about right. Nice. You know what's good about this? this? The butt's slightly thicker, so it fits in here a bit better. Nice. All right, here we go. Full string. That's what we are. Well, not full string, but <laughs> a couple on the string, which is good. Try and keep that tight so we don't get tangled. Oh, he's off, which is good. Thank you. Great, doing all the work for me guys, love it. Yeah, just pump some more water through. Because we're not moving at pit speed. Get those guys happy. Okay, so I've just got a simple switch underneath there that turns this pump on. I put the tap on, obviously to uh, fill it up, but also to stop the water from coming in when I don't want to fill the live bait tank up at, at speed. Uh, put a little vent on. This is just basically PVC plumbing pipe and a couple of uh, attachments from the garden accessories area. <laughs> and then apart from that, I just got the plug on the bottom just so at the end of the day I can just unplug it down there. I can just lift it and tip it out as well. Apart from that, there's just uh, a rubber bungee that goes around it that's hooked on from the side. That just holds the bucket in place and stops it from flying off on the highway. And then that can all just lock down like that. So this was just a 27 litre bucket or bin bucket with the flat top lid from Bunnings. Cost all of like, I think it was $12 something. Yeah, so $12.50 or something. And then you can also pop this pipe in for the deck wash, which plugs into the outlet in here. So too easy. So one thing it does say is I can save this spot. So it says save. Receiving data, slot one empty. Yeah, let's save it in there. Okay, so that's just SL01, so is that slot one? Spot lock one, that's what it would sound like, slot. Um, okay, so number one is this spot. How good's that? And I might rename this on here. Unreal, loving it. So good morning again, yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry, it's all a bit hectic leading up to this point. But look, we've got uh, the min cutter at the front, holding the position. We've got our newly fresh refreshed sounder with his new little jacket on, which is gonna be nice and protected. Look, you can see actually some raindrops on the top there. It's copping the brunt of it. So my cables are protected. I won't have to unplug it as much. Little sun visor as well, and it'll just stop it from all the wear and tear. And I think on those long drives, this is particularly gonna be handy because I can leave it on a lot more. And then basically move down here. You can see we're dual watching the channel 9 and channel 16 at the moment. But I've got my little handpiece here that just clips on there. So all easy access, all in this cockpit area, but still not taking up any deck space. So it's all tucked away and I like it up here in the end. That bracket worked out great because you can see I've got my VHF aerial here, which I should actually get out. And then I made it just so it fits into the rod holder because I don't always want it out. So I can just pop it into the rod holder like that. Put that down. And that can stay down out of the way like that. And that way I've got my aerial up when I want it. But there's a lot there's gonna be a lot of times where I don't necessarily want the aerial up. So or or even out at all. So I didn't want to have it permanently bolted on. I do have a mount for it, but I was sort of like, you know what, just for now, I'm going to rock like this, then I can put it out whenever I want it. And then this is working out great though, that mount is perfect because I can rest rods and aerials up on top of it. And it keeps this guy up because a lot of the time when I'm hosing off the boat, um, I'll hose over this edge. Doesn't matter, these are all waterproof boxes, so it doesn't matter if a bit of water goes in here, but a lot of the time I hose straight down this side and a lot of water runs straight down here. So with the water running down there, it's nice to keep the electronics up off that sort of ground area. Everything else is waterproof except that. Hey, 
look, the radio's working. <laughs> but what we not might do is we'll turn it down a bit. <laughs> but it's nice to hear uh, the radio fire up there, now that we've got the aerial up. But yeah, everything seems to be working. What else did we install? Oh, the, the, um, the trim plate. I'm looking forward to getting that hydrofoil going. It looks good down there, but we're yet to sort of see. It did sort of feel when I came through the bar. It could be that I've got a little bit of extra weight from the trolling motor and battery. Uh, but I think it definitely felt like I was pushing down. When I had it trimmed all the way down, there was definitely a lot more push downwards, keeping that nose down. But it's sort of hard to tell as well, because coming through the bar, because I'm worried about sort of bottoming out and hitting things sometimes, I adjust it up anyway. So we haven't had a good chance. I think we'll get back into the creek maybe and have a bit of a go on some flatter water for that. But apart from that, we'll move the jacket. Everything fits back in here. Still had the anchor out, so I've got that chained up there. But yeah, I've got a lithium battery. It's a BLA 100 amp hour battery. I've, uh, the label was on the other side, but I switched it around this way because I want the plugs as far back as possible. But I've got, that's the main plug, the Anderson plug there is the one hooked in the trolling motor. But there is also another plug in there, which you saw me put on. And uh, that extra Anderson plug is also connected to the terminals. So I can connect my solar panel when I'm out on trips and I can charge that battery up on the fly. So we've got it kind of set up now. And on that little, con on the solar controller, I might even sort of put it onto the side here in a little kind of waterproof area, maybe on the side here. Mm -hmm. And that way, that also has USB sort of ports on it and, uh, and a power outlet. So I can have maybe a cigarette lighter and two USBs. So I can just plug straight in and charge off that battery if I've got plenty of battery power there. Or I can also, I do have another plan for another battery setup. Tape these, put tape on these so they're nice and black now. A bit more stealthy. So all in all, I think the boats are starting to look like my dream boat even more i think all these all these extra add-ons have really sort of brought it together and i think it's gonna like yeah like it's just like i think i'm ready now just to do those trips and and everything oh there's one last thing that i do need to put in and i know someone's mentioned that it should be the first thing um but because it's self-draining deck i can get away with it for a little bit but I have a bilge pump, it's on back order. They didn't have the size that I wanted, but I'm gonna put a bilge pump right in that corner. And as soon as that's ready, I think uh, the mods are done. I think we've, we've kitted it out with just about everything I wanted on it. So I think from this point on, it's all about the trips away. So I do have trips planned to go up north. I've got a very big trip planned, but unfortunately the wind is not playing game. The weather has gone pretty bad up there. Anywhere from about, oh, like, Anywhere from about Harvey Bay upwards seems very, very blown out and uh, and rainy at the moment. So we're just going to have to chill on that for a week. So I thought, you know, what better time to get all these bits that are sort of sitting in the garage accumulating, get them all on. And uh, yeah, I think uh, one thing I really do want as well is this sounder is awesome, yeah, but... I don't know what's going on, but the uh, water's hooking up, but not picking, eh? Oh, here we go. Yeah, so we want to get this chart, but basically with the same shading that I've got on my phone. I think that would be a bit of a game changer as well. You could almost fish without marks with that shading. Lots of bait here though. Is this bait getting any kind of interest? He is jiggling away. Maybe he's just trying to keep with his school though. <laughs> anyway, we'll see if that goes off in a sec. If not, we'll start trolling, slow trolling him around and see if we can find something else. Here comes the livey. Fresh as. Unfortunately, right. shut him down. If I shut that down first, does it just turn this off? No, it's still holding. It's still holding, actually. But we'll just turn it off anyway. <laughs> All right. Let's hightail it in while the tide's good. 